Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. Finally, update 1.5 has hit the test server, bringing with it custom ammunition and plenty of other changes as well. In this video, I shall go through all of the important changes in 1.5 and I'll try and keep it snappy and informative. You can expect a full deep dive into custom ammo once this patch is finalized and moves over onto live servers, but until then, this is all subject to change, so I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So let's get stuck in, and I apologize for some of the janky ping in some of these clips, but the test server means that if I want to find people to fight against, I sometimes have to go over to those US servers. So firstly, we have three new weapons. There is now a medium ammo Winfield, the Centennial. This gun is great, and it's very similar to the Vedely, but with slightly reduced range and damage, and a marginally slower fire rate. What it does gain, however, is a muzzle velocity of 600 meters per second, along with 10 shots in its magazine. Now I really, really like this weapon, it's snappy, and it's easy to hit headshots with. We are also getting the Winfield Terminus shotgun. The shotgun profile of this weapon is most similar to the Spectre bayonet, so that's not good news. It doesn't have the melee attachment, of course, and it can also benefit from levering to increase its fire rate, but this levering is very slow compared to other levering that we've seen. I played around with this weapon a bit, got into some fights, and I was underwhelmed. It seems to lack the range needed for a primary slot shotgun with a rate of fire that is just that slow. There is also a compact version of the Terminus, which is very similar to the Spectre Compact, so you know what to expect there. The Centennial and the Terminus are both getting legendary versions for Blood Bonds as well, and we can see those here. Okay, let's talk about custom ammo. It's the biggest thing in 1.5, and it offers a lot more options when it comes to loadout selection. Basically, most weapons can choose to take custom ammo on the loadout screen. When you do this, you will forfeit the normal rounds and gain the stat line that comes with the custom ammo. Now, the custom ammo is special ammo, so it cannot be resupplied from normal crates and boxes around the map. Custom ammo is part of your loadout, so if you extract, you keep the ammo customization your weapon was equipped with during the match. And that's good, because some of these are rather expensive, and it would be a shame to have to buy them all again after every fight. The way that you can resupply special ammo is also changing. Those small packages of purple special ammo are gone, and you now have these purple crates that are scattered around the map. These appear at every supply point, at watchtowers, and throughout compounds. You can use these to resupply your custom ammo, as well as your dolch, nitro, etc. Where it gets really cool is with single-shot weapons. Any single shot weapon, be it a rifle, shotgun, or crossbow, is able to take two slots of custom ammunition, between which the total ammo pool will be split. You can opt to take some normal ammo, and then one choice of custom ammo on top of that as well. You can then press X to switch the ammo type that your weapon is loaded with, and this is wonderful. I feel that the most use for custom ammo will be seen in single shot weapons. It also costs a little bit more to buy some custom ammo, and the cost is a factor of both the weapon that you are buying the ammo for and the type of ammo as well. Explosive ammo for the Nitro is very expensive, but poison ammo for the Nagant is very cheap. So let's look at your choices for custom ammo. There is always a drawback, and all custom ammo have the native limitation of increased ammo scarcity. We'll start with Dum Dum ammo. This reduces damage, and also therefore the range of your weapon. It also prevents your weapons from being able to penetrate any form of cover, and the muscle velocity is slightly reduced as well. In exchange, it allows you to inflict bleed on enemy hunters when you hit them. The bleed intensity will be low or moderate for small caliber weapons, but with subsequent hits you can ramp up the bleed intensity to tier 3. This may seem like a bit of a raw deal, but forcing someone to stop and bandage by nicking them with your packs at any range can make a massive difference in teamfights. This particular type of ammo will be available for the Springfields, Pax Revolvers, Coldwell Conversion Pistols, but not the Uppercut, and the Nitro Express. Then we have Full Metal Jacket Rounds. These have one specific purpose. They pierce cover exceptionally well. This is at the cost of damage, therefore range, and also muscle velocity. But they allow you to take a chain pistol and fan it through walls, steel, or trees until you get hit markers. It's great for those CQC compound fights, you can take this for the Carabiner, the Martini Henry, the Coldwell Conversion, the Lamat, and the new Winfield Centennial. Now let's talk about high velocity ammo. Now I think this is the one to keep your eye on. If a few hours playing around with this on test server tells me anything, it's that this is the type of ammo most likely to need a bit of tuning down. It makes your bullets go faster. Like, a lot faster. 50% faster. 
This means you can get hits at greater range with greater ease, and up close you can basically treat your weapons as if they are hit scan. The only drawback is increased recoil, and of course the inability to resupply ammo normally. This nasty ammunition works on both the Winfield and the Winfield C, all of the Nagant pistols, including the Officer Carbines and the Bornheim. Now to a more meme ammo type, we have the Poison Bullets. They do less damage, but inflict the poison effect. This makes them good at killing most AI extremely efficiently, but in a straight up fight they are not great for PvP. I can't really see myself taking these very often, with the exception of maybe the Sparks, which lets me take it as a secondary ammo type. They are also available on the Nagant variants and the Winfield Centennial. Similar to Poison, we have Incendiary Ammo, but it does fire damage to the bars that it hits. Subsequent hits can even set a Hunter on fire. This makes these rounds great for PvE because everything just gets set on fire and dies, but the lower damage and the visible tracer left by these bullets makes them quite limiting for PvP. They are available for the Compact Ammo Winfields, the Carabiner, the Pax, the Martini Henry, the Uppercut, the Sparks, Bornheim, Lamat, Labelle, and Mosin. Yeah, they're available on pretty much everything. Uh, and these rounds can, however, detonate barrels instantly when you shoot them. So that can make for some really nice environmental kills as well. Oh, and they have a visible tracer when you shoot them. You don't really get to see it in first person, but at night, it's really cool when you're getting shot at by these rounds. Now we're going to look at explosive ammunition. These are, well, interesting. They reduce your ammo reserves and your muzzle velocity, and they're supposed to also decrease the impact damage of your weapon when you actually hit something, but it allows a radius of damage to be inflicted from your point of impact. Currently, this seems to be a bit buggy, and you can actually use it to kill someone in one shot to the chest with a Martini Henry, but this is not intended. I found that this ammo, while cool, is a bit of a gimmick due to the limited explosion radius. Explosive ammo is also expensive, and it's available for the Martini Henry, the Springfield, and the Nitro. The final and most expensive custom bullet is Spitzer Ammunition. Only for the Mosin and Labelle, this high-end ammo increases both the velocity and the penetration of your shots, making them a nasty headshot machine. Damage is decreased, however, and recoil is increased. I really liked using this type of ammo. It felt strong, but it is pricey, and it only comes with weapons that already have ammo scarcity inbuilt. But wait, there's more to custom ammo than just this, because shotguns are also getting custom shells. The best of these at the moment is probably Fletcher ammo. This causes bleed on hits and gives you a tighter spread at much greater range. Extending the range makes shotguns feel very different, as you can now make meaningful engagements and pressure enemies up to 30 or even 40 meters away. However, the Fletchers cannot penetrate any cover, and they also do less damage and require more precise aim, so they lose the ability to one-hit kill dependably, even at point-blank range. It's a good trade-off, but it really switches up how you have to play shotguns. Fletchers are available for the Cobra Rival, the Spectre, and the Terminus shotguns. Then we have a Penny Shot, which is an interesting choice for shotguns. By amping up the damage, but also increasing pallet spread randomness and removing penetration, this type of shot allows you to deal massive damage at close range with shotguns, but your reliable kill range is reduced as well. Penny Shot will also increase ammo capacity, and is available on the Romero, Terminus, and Crown and King. Slugs. This will shoot a single round, not a spread of shot. They have inaccurate hip fire and reduced penetration, but actually go where you are aiming. Slugs can extend the range of a shotgun by a few meters, provided you are hitting the upper chest or the head. At the moment, these feel slightly undertuned, which is good because they could easily be far too powerful. The Romero, Cold War Rival, Lamat Shotgun, and Spectre can all use slug ammunition. Now, onto perhaps the best new visual effect in the game, we have Dragon's Breath Rounds. These spicy shots for the Romero, Spectre, and Lamat blasts a cone of flame. You lose one tap potential, but anything caught in your blast will get a bit of a charred health bar, and those who get the full brunt of the shot will start burning profusely. It's really cool, if somewhat impractical. Finally, the most useless new ammo type is Starshell. This fires a flare. That's it, it's a flare gun, carry on. But it just also makes that loud noise that a bullet has when you shoot it, like a shotgun blast, so it's a flare that isn't quiet. You can get it onto Lamat and Romero, but don't, just take a flare gun instead. But what's that? There's more? 
While we can't just forget crossbows, arguably the biggest winners out of this whole patch. There are now only two crossbows, the full crossbow and the hand crossbow, which has been massively buffed to a small slot. As single shot weapons, crossbows can take two types of ammo, which is great. We are all familiar with the shot bolt and the explosive bolts for the full crossbow, but the hand crossbow gets three nice new choices. Poison bolts have been buffed. Not only do they do slightly more damage than previously, but they leave a cloud of poison for 90 seconds for a little bit of area control. Then we have the Chaos Bolt, which is a mini half duration chaos bomb that you can lob long ranges. It's a nice little distraction device. And finally, and this really is the last one, Choke Bolts, a 90 second mini choke cloud for blocking explosives, stopping a burn or anything else that you would use a choke bomb for. And they insta-kill immolators, so that's nice. Okay, now that we're done with the new content, I'm going to shoot through some of the other important changes, then I'm going to also list the minor ones as well, because why not? Decoys are quieter and they have a greater throwing distance, therefore they're more effective. The Chaos Bomb has a quieter fuse, this makes it better, good. Hand Crossbow is now a small weapon, this is very very strong. The Concertina now has a consistent hitbox, so no more Concertina shields anymore, bullets will actually be able to shoot things you can see through them. However, destroying a concertina requires long, full metal jacket or nitro bullets, explosives or powerful slashing attacks. Blunt and stab attacks will do little or nothing to a concertina, and slashes will do very little as well if they're from a knife or a pax claw or something tiny. The ghoul trait is now 4 points, that's down from 7. Trios face each other upon spawn, no more lineup where you can't see that third person on your team. There's a bunch of UI and menu changes, but nothing massive, just lots of cleaning up and icon changes. Now this one's interesting, generators now have a chance to spawn in turned on during night maps and fog maps. So it's a cool change, especially for the lighting and sound elements that this plays out. Heavy doors will remain open once you crank that metal crank all the way, just like the metal gates operate now. There are also some map changes, there's new ways onto a couple of roofs, some new peak spots have been added and some have been taken away. You can now overtop ladders faster. And then there's a slew of performance improvements along with some bug fixes. Most notably, that lightfoot hopping is no longer a thing. You can't use lightfoot to bunny hop around silently, it makes noise. And that is... It. 1.5 is a big update, and you can jump onto the test server now, give it a go, and leave some feedback. Stay tuned for more analysis on these new weapons and ammo types soon, and I'll leave my thoughts on the whole system in a later video sometime after playing with it some more, and getting back from a camp full of year 7s. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you especially to our Patreon supporters. Catch you next time, this is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.